Hey there, everybody. It's Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am hopping with Pink Fresh Studios for their August release, and I've chosen one of my most favorite stamps from the release, and it was pretty tough to choose, uh, but I chose the new Floral Garden stamp. I love that it fits on an A2 sized card front, which is four and a quarter by five and a half. So you can use it as a background stamp, but it doesn't take over the entire thing. So you're also able to trim it down. I like to trim mostly all of my card fronts down to four by five and a quarter. And I love that all of the parts of the flowers can be included when I go ahead and trim that down. I'm going to be using a few different techniques to work really cohesively together on this design today. So I know that I want to double stamp this image later for one of my techniques. So it's important that I use my MISTI or a stamp positioning tool. The size of this background stamp also works really well for this because I can place my cardstock in the corner without having to try to realign it up later perfectly. Uh, normally with a background stamp because it stretches across the entire card front, you would need to put your card front or your cardstock in the center of your MISTI. But because this is sized a bit smaller, I'm able to put it in the corner there. I've used Memento Tuxedo Black ink because as you can see, I'm going to be using some Copics as well as Prismacolor colored pencils. And Memento Tuxedo Black, or any Memento ink really, is uh, it works well with alcohol-based markers in that the alcohol in the markers don't make the ink run. I'm using my Copic markers to lay down my base color, and the colors that I'm using are V28, BV11 and BV00. Again, I'm not worried too much about any detailing on this layer because I'm going to be using my colored pencils to do that. After I get all three layers down to a nice gradient, I'm going to go in with my colored pencils and I'm using violet blue, violet, parma violet, and pink. And the pink actually doesn't technically blend in with the colors that I've used or the other colors, the other three colors that I'm using, but I wanted just a really fun pop of color without it looking too much like a fantasy. So I just thought that the light pink on the very tips of the petals would look really nice with the darker purples in the rest of the flower. I'm going to keep this in real time so that I can show you how really how long this takes. This is a labor of love. It is not something that goes quickly, but it's a lot of fun and it's something that can really brush up your skills because you have to take so much time and pay attention to make sure that you get your layers right. You can see with my first layer here, this is pretty light and that's because I'm keeping a really light hand on these colored pencils. I recently watched one of the free Kit and Clowder classes that she's got here on YouTube, and I will link that in the description if you're interested. And it gave me a lot of great tips. I didn't get through the entire lesson yet, but I definitely wanted to use some of the things that I've learned so far on that free class in my coloring today. These classes are so intensive and give so many great tips that you can use. And I'm definitely going to be taking a full fledged class very soon. So here I'm going through my second layer of layering up these colored pencils. And you can see that even though I didn't put any more pressure on because I'm layering up these colors, I get a nice vibrancy to the colors now. And the reason that I put down my Copic colors first was because I wanted, I didn't want any of the white tooth of the cardstock coming through with the light hand of my colored pencils. If you can think about any time you've ever used a colored pencil, even if you haven't used it necessarily artistically on your cards, if you've ever used a colored pencil, you know that if you use a very light hand, you can see the tooth of the white paper underneath, meaning it doesn't cover every single fiber of that paper. To do a second round sort of covers that up a little bit more, but still not completely. So laying down that first base color of Copic colors really allows me to let the purple in the Copic colors that I've chosen stick out and come through rather than the white of the cardstock underneath. And that just allows for a little bit more vibrancy. And another technique that I bring in in just a little bit really plays well with this vibrancy showing through. 
I've sped this up a bit now so that you can see the entire flower come together but that we don't have to sit here forever. I'm going to put on just a bit of music so that you can enjoy the coloring and if you'd like to skip over the coloring and just see how this all comes together you can go ahead and skip forward to 6 minutes and 50 seconds. I've added a picture here so that you can see what it looked like as it was coming together and with this white background. And the white background is important because that is another piece of the technique blend that I'm bringing in next. But first what I have to do is double stamp my image so that I can emboss over it. Now again, like I said, this is very important that you get it exactly where it goes. And excuse me for not having the finished piece here. I actually recolored this piece for the video because I wanted to be sure that I got it right. So I have actually made my card previously and I'm just redoing it here now. But the same principles apply. So I'm starting to or I've started my process by putting some powder down with an EK Tools powder tool, and this will ensure that the embossing powder only sticks to where the Versamark ink, which is a very clear, sticky ink, it only sticks to where I've stamped that. And like I said, it's very important that you get this exactly on point, exactly where you have stamped previously, because if not, you're going to have sort of like a double line, this one stamped line and then an embossed line. And it's going to look a little weird and make you a little dizzy. Um, so you just want to make sure that you use a stamp positioning tool for something like that so that you can get it spot on exactly where you need it. So after I've gone ahead and stamped, I'm using some gold embossing power powder by Hero Arts and I'm just placing that all over the card front. Now obviously you can imagine that when I did this for the actual card, the entire panel was colored. So you can see the gold on the very edges and it makes it a little bit of a softer look than the black ink. But I'm also just gonna show you a little close up here. It gives it a really nice, if you can see the color on the purple flower, you get a really nice shine when it hits the light and it's beautiful. So what I did was actually take a very dark Copic marker, and this is BV29. It's a very dark, sort of purpley, bluish, gray, um, and when you first look at it, it just sort of looks like a, like a midnight blue or something. But it's really dark, and it's going to help the little pieces of the extra flowers that are coming out in the floral garden stamp really stand out against the background. I found that they were sort of getting lost in all of the really brightly colored larger flowers, but I wanted them to stick out and tell their own story. So I went ahead and was very, very nervous to do this only because when I had finished coloring the entire panel, it had taken quite a while, but it totally paid off. I love the way this looks. To me, it looks like it was stamped on a dark piece of colored cardstock, but the vibrancy of having it 
been colored on white cardstock still shows through. And even if you used polychromos or something like that, a bit of the vibrancy that you see here in the flowers would have been lost against such a dark colored background. But it looks beautiful and I really am happy with how this turned out. Thank you so much for coming by. As always, all of the links to the products and my social medias are in the description. Make sure you head on over to the blog link so that you can follow along with us and win some prizes. Thanks so much. And I will see you again soon. Bye.